We saw in the last video that alkanes are a homologous series of hydrocarbons that contain only carbons and hydrogen atoms with no double bonds, and we covered the names of the first four alkanes in the series. In this video though, we're going to talk about the properties of alkanes, and then see how we can write equations for their combustion. Although all alkanes have similar properties, there are trends that you need to know about as the length of the carbon chain increases. The first is that the boiling point increases with chain length. So these four here all have fairly low boiling points, and so exist as gases at room temperature, because they have the shortest chains. However, longer alkanes, with more than four carbons, are liquids at room temperature. And if the chains are really long, then they could be solid. This feature actually explains their next property as well, which is that shorter alkanes are more volatile, meaning that they evaporate more easily, because of that low boiling point we just talked about. Meanwhile, that longer alkanes are more viscous, which just means that they're kind of thick and sticky, like honey. The last property you need to know is that shorter alkanes are also more flammable, which means that they're easier to ignite or burn, as we'll see when we come to crude oil. The next thing we need to look at is combustion reactions. One of the main uses of hydrocarbons, like alkanes, is for fuel, because they release loads of energy when they're burned with oxygen. As long as there's enough oxygen available, we get complete combustion, which is when a hydrocarbon reacts with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water, releasing loads of energy in the process. So we could say that it's an exothermic reaction. We could also say that the hydrogen and carbon in the hydrocarbon are being oxidized, as each of the elements is combining with oxygen to form CO2 and H2O respectively. Now, when it comes to exams, you need to be able to write out the equations and balance them. For example, you could be asked to write the balanced equation for the complete combustion of propane. We saw earlier that propane is C3H8. So we'll react this with O2 to form CO2 and H2O. Then all we need to do is balance it. We know that on the left we have three carbons, so on the right we'll need three CO2s. We also have eight hydrogens on the left, so because each H2O molecule contains two hydrogens, we know we'll need four of them on the right. Then lastly, we need to balance the oxygens. On the right, we now have six oxygens in the CO2s, plus four oxygens from the waters, so 10 in total. So to get 10 on the left, we'll need five oxygen molecules. And finally, we just need to double check that all the numbers balance, which they do, so we're done. As a last example, let's write the balanced equation for the combustion of nonane, which has the molecular formula C9H20. The first step is to write out the unbalanced equation. Then, because nonane has 9 carbons, we know that there will be 9 CO2s on the right. And as it has 20 hydrogens, we'll have to form 10 H2Os. Then lastly, we just need to balance the oxygens. So there's 9 times 2, or 18, in the carbon dioxides, and 10 in the waters, which is 28 in total. So on the left, we must have 14 O2 molecules because that totals 28 oxygen atoms. And that's it, our equation now balances. The key point to take away from this video is that the properties of hydrocarbons, like alkanes, depend on the length of their carbon chain, with the shortest hydrocarbons having the lowest boiling points, and so being the most volatile and flammable, which makes them great fuels. And whenever we use a hydrocarbon as a fuel, we call the process combustion, 
with complete combustion only taking place if there's enough oxygen available, which will produce carbon dioxide and water, releasing loads of energy in the process. Anyway, that's all for this video, so hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.